Hi, this is Tom, Junkie XL, and welcome to Studio Time with Junkie XL. Now we have a very, 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 very special episode, and please follow me for this special episode. And here we go. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have Kitchen Time with Junkie XL, and we're going to make spaghetti carbonara. This is a recipe that was taught to me way back in the day when I was on tour in Italy and this is going to be the spaghetti carbonara. It's a very simple recipe but you have to do it right. If you don't do it right it's going to be awful. If you do it right it's a, God, a dish from God. So these are the ingredients that you need. Let's start with the white wine. You don't need the white wine actually into the cooking but you need the white wine for drinking because it's nice to drink white wine when you're making carbonara. So I'm just going to take a little zip and put it right over there because we don't need it for the cooking. So the most ingredient, important ingredient is, if you can find it, pancetta. But I couldn't find it in the neighborhood that I'm living right now. So I have very thick sliced bacon uh, seeing over here. Then we need um, six eggs at room temperature and we need two packs of dried spaghetti. Uh, carbonara is best served with um, dried spaghetti, not fresh uh, spaghetti, um, but I'll get to that a little bit later. And you need a really good sea salt, very coarse. Uh, you need some grinded salt and you need some really good grinded pepper, fresh basil, and you need some really good olive oil and a little bit of balsamico. And you need a little bit of butter and you need a little bit of cheese and that needs to be a very good quality cheese so for instance i have here a little bit of uh, parmesan that i just bought at the grocery store but these two puppies are the real deal this is pecorino from italy one of my assistants antonio comes from compabassa in italy and his mom is nice enough to send every now and then some really fresh high quality um, cheese Pecorino, the best cheese um, for this dish. So now we go over to what kind of utensils do you need? Well, actually not that much. You need a sharp knife. <clears throat> you need a whisker. Um, you need this to shave the cheese. Um, you need this uh, because later a little bit of the cooking water of the spaghetti we need. So we're going to put it in there. This is the spoon to grab that. Um, a couple of spoons, just to mix it all up. And I'm gonna use, use these to cook the bacon. Uh, we have a filter to filter the spaghetti. Uh, here we're gonna make in the carbonara mix. And we need a pan to cook the spaghetti. And we need a pan, a skillet to cook the bacon. So that's for the start. Now I'm just gonna make everything ready and then we're gonna start prepping this dish. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the mix um, of the eggs and the parmesan and the pepper and a little bit of salt. So what we need is two, four, six eggs. Three eggs go in, in four eggs go in in full and the other two just the egg yellow. So I'm just gonna get a little um, thing to grab whatever is left. Um, so here we go. Egg number one in full. Boom. Act number two. In full. Boom. Act number three. In full. Act number four. In full. And now we get the tricky part. Now we gotta go and do this little thing. So we don't need to act white, we just need to act yellow. And here we have one. Boom. In there. And the second one. And last one. So, separate the egg white from the egg yellow. Here we go. And this can go. We clean this later on. I also always have a towel with me that is just to clean my hands and it's a little bit damp. And I always put it here. So the only thing that I use this for is to clean my hands, a damp towel. So, we take the whisker and we mix this very solidly we 
start adding some coarse pepper. And we actually, for this dish, we need a good amount of coarse pepper. So not just a little bit, but actually quite an amount, because this dish needs to be quite peppery. And um, you almost cannot overdo it. I mean, yes, you can overdo it, but it needs like a good amount. And let's these flavors really sink in. You can smell it already. It starts to smell like really powerful and nutty. Um, so we gotta add a little more pepper in it. We need a really good amount of pepper in this dish. Oh, you can really smell it. Well, let's add some more. So obviously, I have a bunch of people coming over for dinner tonight, so I'm just gonna make some extra stuff. Normally you don't need to do the two packs and this amount of bacon and this amount of eggs. You can just basically divide it by half and you could easily feed three to four persons of this uh, carbonara dish. So this uh, smells nice and peppery. So let's just put this over here for a second and now I'm just gonna uh, prep my pecorini uh, cheese a little bit. Easier to grate. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take my grater. There we go. And the smell of this is so unbelievable. Fresh pecorino cheese from Italy. It doesn't get any better than that. But you can do this with a good Parmesan cheese um, that you buy at your local grocery store. And it will taste almost as good. So let's just stop here for a second. And let's mix this, this up with the eggs. Oh, it smells really good. Let's add a little bit of pepper to it. So this we're gonna prep on forehand and we're just gonna let it sit while I'm gonna be cooking the pasta um, because this needs to be fully at room temperature once we start to finalize the dish. <coughs> so more pepper, smells good. A little bit more cheese. So this over here for a second so this cheese is almost done let's cut up another one start mixing in some more cheese and man I'm telling you the smell of this is so gorgeous so it's all about the quality of the eggs and the quality of the oil and the quality of the cheese it's all about that so this is starting to look really good you can see that it's a really thick mixture Let's add a little more. You might hear some screaming in the background and those are my kids just raising hell in the living room. So in case you're wondering where all that screaming is coming from, it's gonna be that. So, okay, let's do this one more time. Oh, look at this. This is a really thick mixture, really nice. I'm gonna add a little bit of coarse sea salt to it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So this is ready to rest and now we're going to put the big pot over here and we're going to fill it with water and we're going to put it on the stove. So let's move this over here. This is going to get cleaned later on. We're going to take the pan and just fill it up with cold water. Now the interesting point is that don't put olive oil into the water. I know you've seen it on multiple websites and multiple recipes. Oil does not belong in water when you cook pasta. It's not the Italian way, whatever the sources might be that told you that. Um, and the salt goes in only when the water cooks. So don't put the salt in while you're cooking the water. When it's cooking, then you put the salt in. And you can put in a fair amount um, when it's cooking. So we'll get to that a little bit. And you might be wondering, why am I chewing so much on my chewing gum? Um, Actually, I stopped smoking like six weeks ago almost, and I'm just chewing on a Nicorette. So uh, for all the people out there that are still smokers, I would highly, highly advise to stop like I did finally after so many years. And the pot is on the stove. I'm going to put it on and there we go. I'm going to put the lid on, wait with the salt. Where's the lid? Oh, there's the lid. Here we go. 
Okay, that's going to take a while. So, in the meantime, I have my bacon here on a white cutting board. I don't want to be cutting bacon really on my wood cutting board because it's pork, it might contain bacteria, and you don't want that to seep into your cutting board. So I use a plastic board always on top. Um, now let's spread these out a little bit, and I'm just gonna cut a few of these in very small blocks with a very sharp knife. Again, I'm using my damp towel to clean my hands quickly, and I'm gonna take a little plate, and I'm gonna put the cut bacon on there. So. Be careful for your hands. Always make like a little bow like that when you take a very sharp knife and you cut bacon or anything else. And I'm now going to cut these really small little cubes. And then later on, we're going to prep that into the pan. So this takes a little while. And in the meantime, I'm going to tell you why making carbonara is such a feast. Well. It's not only a good dish, but it makes my assistants really happy. So to have um, a dinner once or twice a week that I prepare, sometimes it's pizza, sometimes it's something else, but once a week at least it's carbonara and it makes my assistants very happy. And you know, happy assistants tend to work like way harder than they do when they're hungry. So that's what we do. And then we put it out on um, a family style table outside in front of the studio. And then we all sit down for like an hour, hour and a half and enjoy our food and talk about more important things in life. Like for instance, Donald Trump. <coughs> um, so, uh, as the cutting goes on, um, a lot of these dishes uh, were made in the process of uh, Dark Tower uh, and in many, many other movies. And look at that, it looks amazing. And it also smells really, really, really good. So we're gonna take a few more. And um, every movie has like a signature dish. So I would say the carbonara is definitely the dish for uh, the Dark Tower. But on some of the other movies, there were other dishes. So the movie that I did before that, for instance, Deadpool, Deadpool was all about pizza. So I had this pizza oven and I would make um, pizzas for the guys. So maybe that's an idea for another uh, tutorial to shoot that, how to make pizza dough and how to make pizza toppings. Um, but that is always a very interesting, um, Food item as well, as well, that makes everybody very happy. Um, as the cutting goes on for the bacon, I'm going to check on my water in a little bit if it's cooking. The whole dish doesn't really take all that long to cook. Um, it's all about the timing and getting everything right. And that's all there is to it and having more or less the right amounts for it. But even there, you can go a little wrong and it would still taste very, very good. So. Let's see, I think we're gonna cut a few more because we have a big group of people eating here tonight. I'm just gonna tap my, high, my, my head a little dry. Um, oh, my glasses are always falling, almost falling. Here we go. I've never done a filmed version of uh, cooking food. So this is, uh, forgive me, I'm not Gordon Ramsay like right away, but I'm just trying to uh, yap away as I'm, as I'm cutting this bacon up that smells really good. Um, I can try an imitation of Gordon Ramsay, but I'm not sure if it's gonna do me any good. Um, so I'm just gonna keep talking about other stuff. Like for instance, it's extremely hot this time around in LA. Um, for people in Europe, you probably don't even understand these temperatures, but this is like, it was 44 degrees Celsius the other day. Um, so you don't even need a stove, you can just like, take the eggs and the bacon outside and just throw it in your car and it's gonna be done in five minutes. Um, but it was extremely hot and um, even the air conditioning in the house is barely capable of cooling this place down. So it's actually quite warm in here at this point. So forgive me the, the sweating a little bit. And here we go. I would say this is a really good starting point to bake the bacon. So. Let's save, save these puppies and put them aside. Maybe I'll eat them a little later on. And now let's see how the water is doing. The water is getting hot. It's not cooking, but it's getting hot. So, um, spaghetti. I would advise to buy something 
really Italian. I'm not going to show you the name, just like something that's proper Italian, properly dried, um, that tastes good. Normally this takes like 12 to 13 minutes to cook. Um, I would say the Italians um, eat it al dente, but the Italian al dente is a little bit too much al dente for me, so I like it a little bit on the crispy side, but not too much. Um, so I would say add a minute to it, so it's going to be more like 13, 14 minutes. But you always have to test, so by the time it gets to that amount of cooking time, I always grab one or two out of the pan, I just throw them on there and then I'm going to test them if it's, if it's ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to open up the spaghetti but for the time I need them. And now I'm going to take this really big pan and put it on the stove. Put this to medium high. So important in all cooking is that you make sure the pan is really hot before you start cooking. So don't throw the ingredients in right away. Just wait for it until it gets really hot. And it will get hot pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so, we have our bacon. We just put it right there. And the only thing that we need right now is a mix of butter and a little bit of oil. So we're going to take a little bit of butter and that's going to help us with the sauce later on. And we're going to mix that with a little bit of olive oil. And that's where we're going to cook it. So, I'm just going to take my olive oil, I'm just going to put the butter right there, I'm going to put the oil, the oil right there, and I'm going to get my two wooden spoons. And you know what, I'm just going to cut up the rest of the bacon too, who cares. Um, it's always somebody's birthday somewhere, so there's always reason to, you know, to cut up some extra bacon. So let's just do it while we're at it. What am I going to do with these slices anyway when they're left? I mean, maybe tomorrow with eggs in the morning? Um, maybe I don't feel like it. So let's just cut this thing up, make an extra big party. Like I said, it's somebody's birthday when this thing gets broadcasted. So that's a good excuse to cut up some extra bacon. Okay. Um, I'm starting to feel like Gordon Ramsay a little bit um, by just talking for all these time periods straight while I'm not even talking about food. Anyway, so I'm cooking the bacon and let's just see. It's cooked. Okay, we put the knife away. We do have to clean the knife though because we cut bacon. You can't cut anything else with this knife after you've thoroughly cleaned it. So now that I'm done with the greasy stuff, I need to make sure that I have clean hands. So I'm just gonna wash them thoroughly with soap. Hygiene is important in the kitchen. So I'm just gonna clean my hands. See, I, I put my hand right on here and it's like, it's starting to get warm, uh, not quite hot enough. So I'm just gonna wait a little longer. Let's see how our water is doing. It's not even cooking, it's getting there. So we're close, but not close enough. Um, let's see, oh, what I do wanna tell you, so this egg mix, we're not going to cook the egg mix. What we're going to do is, um, is a technique that is um, it's very Italian and you also see it in, um, in the French kitchen and that is that you pour in eggs raw onto a dish that is cooked and then you stir it until the eggs reach the temperature of a minimum of 83 to 84 degrees Celsius. I don't know what the equivalent is in Fahrenheit but 83, 84 Celsius. Um, and that's when the, um, the bacteria in raw eggs are gone uh, and you can eat them safely. So a hollandaise sauce is also made on that same uh, principle um, and a couple of other egg dishes. So um, you see, for instance, in French recipes where they cook a soup and then at the very end when they serve the soup, they put in a little egg raw, but then the soup is actually cooking the egg uh, while it's being served. So by the time you eat it, it's actually properly cooked. So that's what we're going to do too. Um, so, but the mix is like, hmm, it's really good. It needs actually a little bit more pepper, I think. Um, it's really soaking up flavor uh, from the, the pecorino cheese and um, the sea salt and the fresh grounded pepper. So this is getting a really, really nice mix. Um, so we use this later to pour over the spaghetti. Oh, the pan feels really nice and hot. So I'm just gonna pour in a little olive oil 
and a little butter. So the cool thing is that the butter will give it uh, a specific taste, but the mixture of butter and olive oil together is gonna make sure that the butter is not gonna burn. Uh, because butter in itself can easily burn, but when it's mixed with oil, you can cook at very, very high temperatures. So it's starting to get a little bit of brown, and that's perfect, and then you add the bacon. Or, if you have a chance, pancetta, because that's really what you want. And now we're just gonna cook this really nice and smooth. Oh, the smell of it is insane. So I'm just gonna put on this thing, because otherwise the kitchen is gonna be completely blue in, in no time. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it on a little bit so you can still hear me. I'm gonna put the oil back. And we're gonna take a little break of 10 seconds and just zip on that lovely Chardonnay one more time. Very nice. Okay, back to work. Stir this bacon around. So the interesting thing of the carbonara dish, how you put it all together, is that once the spaghetti is cooked, and we take one scoop of cooking water of the spaghetti uh, into our little measuring cup. Um, and the spaghetti is fully cooked. The bacon or pancetta would also be fully cooked. And there would be um, some fat left in the pan and the uh, bacon or pancetta would, would be fully baked and, and, and fully cooked. And then you actually take the spaghetti and then you put some cheese on it and then you start mixing it with the bacon and, and uh, the butter and the oil. And then you add the, the cheese egg mix to it. And you keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring until you have the sp spaghetti carbonara. Um, but we'll get to that. But what's the interesting point? And this is the science behind spaghetti. It's like when spaghetti is cooked, you put it in a sieve to get rid of the water, obviously. And the worst thing that you can do is open up a, a, the cold water um, to stop it from cooking any further. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because if the spaghetti is hot and you take it out of the pan, the spaghetti has pores too, like a human being. You know, when we, when we work out, we sweat. And now there's sweat coming out of our pores. And it's similar to spaghetti, but then reverse engineered. So the pores of the spaghetti are open. So if you mix it with oil and with Parmesan cheese straight when it comes out of the cooking pan, it starts absorbing the cheese and the oil into the spaghetti and you get a really flavorful spaghetti. So it's super important that after you put it in the sieve, in the sieve to get rid of the excessive water, don't um, uh, rush it over with cold water and first put this, uh, the Parmesan or the Pecorini cheese on it and it gets really absorbed into the spaghetti. So this is something that I learned from this um, uh, Italian chef who was um, a, a real uh, chef. And that's how they do it. Actually, when you go to certain Italian restaurants, they have this massive fresh Parmesan cheese with a hole in it. And when they're done cooking the spaghetti, they throw it into the cheese and then they toss it for a couple of times before they put it on a plate and start finishing the dish um, for whatever you're uh, eating. So that's the, the proper Italian way. So let's just see here. Is it... Uh, does it smell good, guys? It starts smelling good, right? Yeah, 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 good, good, okay. So, ah, we're starting to have boiling water here. So, when the water starts boiling, it's very important. You take out a clock, at least. I usually take out a clock. Um, and I'm just gonna go to my clock and I'm gonna set it to stopwatch or alarm. No, I'm going for stopwatch. And I'm gonna hit start the moment when I throw the spaghetti in. Um, because when you're cooking spaghetti, you don't want to be an idiot. You just want to really get it out exactly in time. So this is looking good. I'm going to take this lid off. And what I said before is like when it's cooking, that's when you throw the salt in. So let's now take the salt and see what happens. It's, it's going to start boiling up like no tomorrow. So 
Wait for a second until the salt is dissolved. Here we go. And now the magic can start. And the magic is the spaghetti goes in. Here we go. Two packs. Boom. So let it fall aside. We'll clean out that later. And now you just stir a little bit. Because you want to make sure the spaghetti goes under as quickly as you can. Because otherwise you have parts of the spaghetti that gets undercooked. And some parts get overcooked. You don't want to be in that situation. So, the spaghetti is on the water. I'm going to put the lid on a little bit so we get to boiling temperature. And then I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to hit start on my clock. So here we go. It starts counting. 30 minutes, 40 minutes. We need to check that out, what's going on there. So, in the meantime, I'm going back to my bacon. Make sure this is all hunky dory perfect. And we're gonna see, I'm gonna wait until this starts cooking again, and then I'm gonna take the lid off, and then I properly stir the spaghetti around to make sure um, nothing gets entangled and it gets evenly cooked. So this is, this is going well for now. Well, too. Sure, the heat is still good. And we're starting to get back to boiling temperature. And it takes usually about a minute, minute and a half, to get back to boiling temperature after you've thrown the spaghetti in. And then at a certain point, you can take the lid off and it will continue to cook. And then it's when you can stir it around a little bit because the spaghetti will start softening up once you start cooking. Um, so, just going to leave it alone for a little bit. Um, so, the things we need to get ready is, um, this is the sieve, just we want to throw that right here so I can actually throw the spaghetti in there when it's done cooking, just to make sure where it's all there. We need two gloves to actually grab the pan because the pan is going to be stinking hot. We have two empty boxes that still need cleaning out, so we're going to do that right there. Um, the butter we don't need anymore, so that can go back into the fridge. What else do we need to compile this dish? We have our things right here. Ah, we need to make sure that we have one scoop of pasta water before we throw the water away, because that would be a missed opportunity if we did that. Um, just gonna stir it a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, trying, it's, it's starting to soften up, but it's only cooking for two minutes, so it needs like another 12, 13. Um, we're going to make sure this is all right. Let's stir it one more time. We put this thing here. We have the oil here. We have the cheeses here and the grape. We still need that. We got the salt here. We got the pepper here and the balsamico. So two spoons. So we're ready to compile the dish completely. We just want to make sure we have a really big... Ah, we're just going to grab the, the pan that I cooked it in. It's going to be fine. So I'm just going to put two of these that will prevent the heat from the pan going onto my desk. So we're going to put the pan back here after we have poured the water out. Cool. So bacon is starting to do really, really well. Um, the spaghetti is now cooking for roughly four minutes and it's starting to soften up by just like, you know, pouring it around a little bit like this, it's going to it's gonna loosen up and it's not gonna be like spaghetti. It's gonna be actually, you know, kind of cool and loose. So, um, there's a little bit of waiting here. This is getting very close. I'm just getting, put the heat a little down. This starts to look like really well. Um, so the completion of the carbonara dish is done completely not on the stove. Like when the cooking is done, um, everything is get assembled like off the stove and you don't heat it up again. So it's not like, um, spaghetti with tomatoes or with fish that you put the spaghetti back into the pan and toss it with the sauce for like a minute for extra cooking and then serve it. This is all done off the off the, uh, the stove. So let's pour this a little bit more. This is going well. Five minutes twenty. Do I know a good joke? No. So we're just gonna hang around for the food to cook. Oh, I know a good idea. I can take another Chardonnay break. Mm. That might be a good idea.
That was a very good idea. Um, okay, well, oh, we can, we, can, we can prep some of the leaves. So we need some of the basil leaves. So um, this is like a little fresh plants that you can just put um, just in your kitchen. You can pick this plant up at any grocery store for $3 roughly, and it will give you multiple leaves over time. It's way cheaper than actually um, buying basil uh, in a plastic bag every time. Um, and I do that actually more often. If you look right here, um, we got some herbs here that I use a lot and um, I just give them water. I've got even got like a small tomato plant right here that I use for salads. So it's actually pretty cool to have your own, a couple of these own little plants. Uh, I have for the yard, I have parsley and uh, mint. So it grows really well here because we're in California, so it has a lot of sun. Works really well. So, six minutes to go roughly for the cooking. We start to see that it's really opening up. It starts to look great. Um, bacon looks really, really good. Um, but I can't emphasize this enough. If you were to do this with pancetta, it's a whole different level. So the highest quality carbonara that you can make is with eggs that you pick up from a farm, fresh. Um, real pancetta imported from uh, Italy. Unfortunately, this is bacon, but it's really good bacon. And real pecorino cheese from Italy, if you can. And we have that. So this is a fairly high uh, quality uh, dish to make. Um, and uh, money-wise, this dish, uh, if you do it the highest quality possible and you cook for four to six people, this would probably cost you $25 to make, but you can eat with six people of it. Um, so it's, it, I think it's pretty good. It's like, you know, a couple of bucks per person. Um, but it's, uh, it's nice. Uh, so for me, carbonara is comfort food. And uh, if I uh, uh, did something, if I had a really bad meeting, carbonara is the answer. If I had a really good meeting, carbonara is the answer. So it's actually, it's always good. Um, it's um, a friend of mine. Uh, also, a uh, very, very gifted uh, composer, Lauren Balf, um, said to me once, um, when the meeting goes back bad, we go to the pub and have a beer. If the meeting goes break, great, we'll go to the pub and have a beer. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty much what that is with uh, Carbonara. Um, I'm just trying to Gordon Ramsay myself here through another five minutes uh, um, of uh, cooking. Um, actually, I think uh, most of these cooking shows are cut, uh, so I'm not sure if we're going to do that as well, but uh, I'm just talking all the way through. When did we start filming? Like 20 minutes ago or so? So, okay, uh, potentially longer, <clears throat> but might be good if you see the whole episode so you know actually um, how long it takes to finish the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, but um, yeah, I just got to keep uh, my, uh, my uh, stories up. I guess. Uh, so the thing that I'm not wearing today is uh, what my uh, little son gave me to me, which is um, uh, a, a cooking shirt. It's just, it's just too damn hot for it. It's, uh, it's like close to 40 degrees outside. So um, the air conditioning is having a hard time cooling this place down. Uh, so let's not do that. <clears throat> okay, bacon is almost done. Spaghetti. Okay, this is the trick. I mean, I know it's always tricky to get these puppies out. Um, I just, it's a, even though we're way under the time, I just want you to see it. Um, so what we see right here is the spaghetti, but you could almost, you, you could see it's like still, it's still like raw. So if I cut this and I take a bite of it, it's super raw on the inside. So. That's why you just need to need to check it, especially if you haven't cooked uh, spaghetti a lot in your life. It's good to check it every now and then. So this is like very undercooked, but I always use the clock. But I always test it because some spaghetti is not the other. It's not like, oh, it's always 12 minutes or 13 minutes. Um, so especially when it gets close to the advised cooking temperature, I start scooping. Uh, one of these out and then just test it and just to make sure that it's it's what I want it to be instead of relying on the cooking time that it says on the on the package so the bacon is getting really close to done so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take some kitchen t uh, paper 
some towel, and I'm going to scoop a few bacon bits out that I'm going to use for decoration when I serve the dish yeah. uh, later on. So I'm just going to take a few of those of these puppies. And that's enough. So, so I'm going to save these. I'm going to just make sure we get rid of the excessive cook cooking oil. So they become somewhat dry and, and crispy. You see all that, this is cooking fat. Um, we don't need that when we use them for garnish. Um, just put them on a, a dry patch. Squeeze the, the fat out of it. And I think we got most of it out. So this is now cooked bacon. So now it's fine to put it on the, on the wooden uh, cutting board. You don't want to do that with raw bacon um, or with chicken. Chicken is even worse. Um, so, 11.45. Let's check one more time. So, this is close to 12 minutes. Okay. It's getting really close. And I think Italians would potentially serve this for another, like another 30 seconds cooking. Um, I, I mean, you, you can't really see, but it has this really nice rough structure uh, to it where the sauce is going to stick to really nicely later. So I actually like this, but a lot of people think it's too al dente. So I'm just going to cook it a little longer. Okay, so it's like 12, four, 12 minutes and 40 seconds. So at 13.10, I'm going to take one out again. I'm going to test it if it's fine. I'm going to take the heat off and immediately start throwing it in there so it doesn't, doesn't overcook. So I'm just going to wait another 15 seconds. This is the scary part. This is where you can mess it up. All the great work you did, you can destroy in these last 15, 16 seconds. Okay, and it's 10 past. Okay, so I'm just going to grab one. If I can do it, oh, okay, I'm just going to grab this bit here. Okay. Twenty more seconds. Okay. I'm going to put the gloves on. Okay. 1342, 43, better hurry up because at 50 it needs to go off. Mm. And boom, there we go. Straight to the sieve. Everything is in there. Okay, the pan is going to go here. This is what we're going to use to assemble the whole dish. So, let's get rid of all the excessive water. It's still hot, so I'm just going to use the You see how it's steaming hot, it's steaming hot. And that will cook the eggs later on. So now, this is looking perfect. So I'm just gonna throw it back in. Okay, and this is the Italian master trick that this guy taught me. Now you sprinkle it with a little bit of olive oil and with, Parme uh, with, with pecorino or parmesan and you toss it around. Put some oil on it. Take the fresh pecorino, put a good amount of pecorino on top of it. Here we go, toss it. Oh, that smell, it's insane. So, toss it around like really well and the spaghetti will just suck that oil and, par and, the, and the pecorino up like no tomorrow. Oh, this smells incredible. Okay, a little bit more. Oh, smell is so good. Beautiful. Now we're going to get our bacon and the butter and the oil 
and it's all going in. Here we go, boom. This we're gonna put here. It's gonna get cleaned later on. Oh, you know what I forgot? Huh, the cooking water, I forgot to. Okay, well, mistake is, is human. So, you need the, actually a little bit of the cooking water um, from the spaghetti, uh, if the sauce is getting a little too dry, to start making it creamy again. So, but we can do that with hot water from the, from the tap, but this is actually a mistake. I should have been more um, on the ball with that. But mistakes are human, like in every studio time, you see multiple mistakes. So, we toss the oil and the bacon around for a good amount, and now we're gonna add the egg cheese mix. So, here we go, it goes all in, all in. And this is the reason why you're not putting it on the stove. The spaghetti is hot enough to bring this egg to a temperature where you want it to be. So instead of cooking it, you're just gonna stir it until it reaches that desired temperature of 83 degrees, 84 degrees Celsius. So whatever that is in Fahrenheit. Some smart people who are watching this can actually Google that and figure it out how much it is. So, toss it, toss it. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water, just a little, little, little bit of water, and then we're gonna scoop it again, so I'm getting, taking my measuring glass, and it's not that much. So I'm taking hot boiled water from the, from the stove, and that's it, that's only as much as you need. But if you use the pasta water, it has a little bit of extra flavor that you could really use. Um, but I messed it up, so we're gonna do it without it. Okay, so it starts to get really nice and creamy right now. And then we're gonna add some more pecorino. And we're gonna mix it up. Uh, this is starting to smell really, really good. Okay, so we're done here. So I'm gonna put this there, and I'm gonna put this there, and now I'm gonna show you how you can make your perfect carbonara. Mm -mm -mm. Got a snack while you're going. So let's now take a dish. Here we go. And now we're gonna take, and this is the final preparation before you serve it. So you take a good amount of spaghetti, Putting it on your plate. Like that. And then if you do this properly, like I'm always trying to do, you gotta make sure that the plates are absolutely squeaky clean because that's what they do in a restaurant too and that makes it look so incredibly nice, doesn't it? So, okay, so that's your carbonara right there. And then to finish it, you're gonna put on a little bit of really nice olive oil a little bit just like that. Then a little bit of extra pecorino. Ooh, look at that, that looks good. And then some extra pepper. Here we go. And now we're gonna put a few extra bacon bits or pecorino if you have it, like on top. Okay and a little bit of basil. Actually, basil is not part of the original um, Parmesan dish, um, but this chef used it because he really liked the taste of this with um, um, the carbonara dish. So th th this is actually not part of traditionally of the carbonara dish. So, and then we're gonna do something that tastes good, but also looks really nice. We're gonna take some balsamico and we're gonna pour it in here a little bit and I'm gonna take a really small spoon which is over here um, small spoon I'm then gonna take this and I'm gonna make a really really sharp move from left to right and here we go there we go spaghetti carbonara served
Okay. Mission impossible completed.